The next muscle that we're gonna go over is your latissimus dorsi. So if we take away your trapezius muscle, you're gonna see that in that inferior portion, your trapezius sits over your latissimus dorsi. So if we hide that, you are going to see that you have your latissimus dorsi. So just like what the name describes, latissimus, I believe is broad muscle and dorsi, dorsal aspect of your body. So the backside, posterior side of your body. So you are going to see your latissimus dorsi, which originates from spinous process of T7 to T12. And then it's going to attach or blend in with your thoracolumbar fascia, which is not really shown here. But your thoracolumbar fascia then will blend into your iliac crest and the latissimus dorsi will attach to your iliac crest and then the inferior three to four ribs, it will have attachment sites on there. So you can see down here, that's where it's going to attach to as well. Insertion of your latissimus dorsi is going to be, the textbook that I'm referring to says floor of intertubercular groove of the humerus or some textbooks and literature says that it's on the medial lip of the intertubercular groove. But the intertubercular groove is where your biceps long head tendon sits. And that's where the lats are going to come up onto the humerus and attach on that medial aspect or floor of the intertubercular groove. Then the innervation of latissimus dorsi is your thoracodorsal nerve coming off of the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. So this is innervated by nerve root C6 through C8. And the action of your latissimus dorsi is that it extends AD ducts and internally rotates the humerus. So let's get into the functional application. So this acts on the GH joint and indirectly on the shoulder girdle. Your lat does have some fascial connection to the inferior border of your scapula. So there is going to be some communication and some influence on scapular stability. But primarily your lats are going to act on the humerus or your arm. Even though it has this broad attachment along thoracolumbar fascia and your spinous process, your lats really do not have too much contribution to creating movement or motion in your lower back or your lumbar spine. So it's gonna primarily be stable in that region and act on your upper extremity. We use the lats in a lot of shoulder adduction movements, so lat pull downs, pull ups. If you think about it as a shoulder extensor when you're in front of your body, then we have front lat pull down variations, obviously shoulder adduction movements, like cable types of shoulder adduction movements. And also when you think about any lat exercises, there is an internal rotation component at the shoulder joint. Functionally, like in sports, things like swimming, paddling, even boxing, there's a lot of lat activation when you're completing a punch to internally rotate and also pulling your arm back. And when we're doing any types of exercise that we need to activate our back to stabilize our shoulder joint, like deadlifting, even powerlifting, Olympic cleans, all of those require a lot of latissimus dorsi activation. To stretch your latissimus dorsi, you either need to do extreme shoulder flexion External rotation also helps with the humerus. One of the favorite stretches that I like to incorporate is when you're in shoulder flexion with your elbows bent and you're externally rotating your shoulders. You can stretch your latissimus dorsi unilaterally by grabbing onto something and going into protraction and shoulder flexion as if you're holding onto the side of the squat rack or holding onto a band. So those are some of the main ways that you're gonna stretch your latissimus dorsi. Hopefully you can use this information and apply it to your training, your clinical practice or coaching practice. And if you like this video, hit the like button below, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or feedback, drop it in the comments below and stay tuned for more anatomy videos in the future. Aloha.